Jeffries recently came out with a report in Specialty Chemicals Industry where they spoke about the big Indian opportunity due to innovators looking at the China plus one theme and also falling production in the European Union post the Russia-Ukraine crisis. As per the report, in FY23, new project investments by Indian companies reached $91 billion and gross block rose 2.7 times, revenue rose 2.8 times and EBITDA rose 3 times in the last 6 financial years, that is from FY17 to FY23. One segment that caught my eye was fluorination. This particular sub-segment of the specialty chemical sector has been picking up in the last few years. First about this chemistry, it is complex in nature and very few players have the technical expertise to produce this molecule. Fluorochemicals are compounds which are used in many sectors, including but not limited to cooling, refrigerants, dyeing, automotive, electronics, agriculture, pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, textiles, electronics and pharma. Now let's take forward the pharma sector because this is a big consumer of fluorination products. If you map the trajectory of fluorine usage in pharma, it has just been increasing. In 1940s, there was no contribution in the pharma space. In 1950s, it increased to 17%, then moved to levels of 11%, then 20%, and since then, it has been seeing a sharp improvement from 32% in 1980s to 79% in 2010s now. Now, that's a big jump. Even in agrochemicals, 53% of the agrochemical products today contain fluorine and the rest don't. So these are the two big segments where this product or chemistry is used. The new segments which are seeing increased use of fluorine are electric vehicles, fuel cells and coating of printed circuit boards with enhanced electrical characteristics and all these sectors are poised for strong growth. Now, if you're talking about chemicals, we have to talk about China. So revenues of Chinese fluorochemical players, they have been seeing a decline number of reasons including the big clean environment push leading to closure of a lot of factories. Now this has led to either decline in growth numbers or underperformance versus the Indian players. So Chinese fluorochemical companies they reported a decline in growth in FY16 then there was a rebound in FY18 but the growth since then has not been very strong. FY23 ended with a growth of 20%. The other numbers are there for you on the screen. Come Indian companies, which includes SRF, Naveen Fluorine and Gujarat Fluorochemicals, the revenue growth has only been increasing. From 7% in FY17 and gradually falling in FY20 and FY21, this industry has made a comeback and FY23 ended with 57% growth after 44% growth just in FY22. These are not the only three companies. Anupam Rusan is betting big on fluorination, which now contributes 15% to the top line. Lakshmi Organic acquired a company called Miteni. This is in 2019, which is the manufacturer of fluoro specialties, which for them will be a high margin business. They recently spoke about high focus on fluoro intermediaries as fluoro based organic and inorganic chemical products, according to them, are gaining high importance. Now on the outlook. For SRF, Fluorochemicals is a part of the many businesses company is in, but they have announced a 600 crore capex, which will cater to solar PV, EVs and automotive segments. For Naveen Fluorine, HPP or high performance product plant will run full capacity in 2023. This is a big trigger for the stock. The other refrigerant product, R32 capacity, will add around 200 crores of annual revenues from second half of FY24. Gujarat Fluorochemicals speaks about growing demand from new emerging sectors in the new fluoropolymer space and the new fluorochemicals plant gradually ramping up production because of higher demand. So watch this space because a lot of action is expected in coming quarters, leaving you with the valuations. Naveen Fluorine is the most expensive at 42 times, followed by SRF at 34 times and Gujarat Fluorochemicals is the cheapest at 20 times.